Hello and welcome to my video on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Easily the best handheld that isn't from Nintendo. I've got so much that I want to cover in this video and I really want to get across just how much of a great system this was. This was my original system that I got about 10 years ago and I really loved it but there was one main problem with it and that is the fact that even though this came out in 1999 it still didn't have a backlit screen which was kind of common at the time, but the reason that I got back into Neo Geo Pocket recently is the fact that when I went to visit Deadpan Robot in their new shop in Birmingham, the guy who runs the shop actually let me borrow his own modded Neo Geo Pocket Color with an incredible TFT backlit screen. I actually took this system here on my journey to Edinburgh for work a few weeks ago and on the car ride all the way to London for MCM last weekend, so I've put a lot of time into this over the past few weeks and that is why I wanted to make this video because I have some fantastic games and I'm really excited to share my thoughts and opinions on what is quite possibly the best handheld console library of the 1990s. Let's get started. So the Neo Geo Pocket was SNK's take on a Game Boy competitor. Originally it was only in black and white and it came out in 1998, but the year after they introduced the colour version which I've got here. It's really interesting the direction they took with this system. Unlike their home console at the time which was really trying to push for arcade quality graphics, this didn't really push the envelope in any way in particular. In fact it's only just a little bit more powerful than the Game Boy Color which was Nintendo's competitor at the time. What they did instead was optimize this system for incredible battery life and they just really tried to make this the best handheld that they possibly could in line with the other handhelds of the time. They didn't really wow with any of the technical features of the system but what they did was make some incredible first party games for it which really helped the system in its first year on sale especially here in the UK where it actually did fairly well to begin with. So although the hardware is kind of primitive it does have a few advantages over the Game Boy Color. Although there is a small a palette of colors to choose from it does allow you to display more of those colors on the screen at once and it really makes the game stand out it also allowed more sprites on the screen than the Game Boy 64 compared to a total of 40 on the Game Boy Color although I haven't seen that many games that take advantage of that many sprites at once but it did show that SNK were trying to push the envelope in a few small ways at least the downfall to the Neo Geo specs though has to be in the RAM for the system it only had a maximum of 12 kilobytes compared to 32 of that on the Game Boy Color. So the games do seem to run a little bit slower than what you might be used to on the Game Boy, but it does make up for it in other ways. And before we take a look at the games, let's take a look at the system itself and the design, the layout, the feel of it, and why it is just such a good design for a handheld. Let's start first with the very famous clicky stick as they call it. So as you can hear there, it actually uses micro switches and there's eight different directions and it is easily my favorite control configuration of any handheld. It's got a really simple layout with just two face buttons and an option button at the top. There's no start or select here. There's also the power button on the side there and the console does have kind of a sleep feature as well. So depending on the game, you can just tap the power button to turn it off and then when you hold it down again, it will remember where you were in the game and carry on from where you left off, which is really good, especially with Card Fighters Class, which I've been playing all week. By far the biggest thing about the system that a lot of people still remember today is the amazing analog stick, and it really does hold up very well. In terms of design as well, this was one of the only horizontal consoles at the time. Obviously, all the Game Boys were vertical, although of course the Lynx and the Game Gear about 10 years earlier were horizontal, but they'd kind of faded by then, and the only other competitor really was the Wonder Swan Color which came out in Japan around the same time and that one you can actually play in both directions you can play it in portrait and horizontal mode and I would love to do a video on this at some point in the future I also want to try and get a backlit screen before that video happens so maybe in a few years time if I manage to get myself a modded one because the Wonder Swan is such an interesting and unique system too and I can't wait to talk about it so as well as the console I was also gifted this this is called the Flash Master which allows you to to install two games onto the memory of this thing and there's a little switch at the top so you can switch between them. There's a program available for both 
both Mac and Windows, and I've actually tested it out on both, and I've actually tested a load of great games. So before I get into my games, let me show you some of the best games that I've found for the system that I've played on this, including some homebrew and some fan translations of Japanese exclusives as well. I'm so glad that they gave me this because it's gave me a great way to experience the whole range of games available for the system. Now first up is a game called Crush Roller, which was originally an arcade game, but this version improves on it in every single way. It's a really fun take on the classic Pac-Man formula, with a really interesting mechanic where you have to paint the floor and also attack the enemies on the stage at the same time as well. It seems like a game that could be really fun, and thankfully, thanks to this flash cart, I didn't have to spend over £100 to try it for myself. Another really cool puzzle game that I found is one called Delta Warp, and I've never played anything like this one before. You play as a triangle, and every time you move it flips over from black to white, and you can also press the A and B buttons to twist the entire thing around. And it's a really simple concept for a game, you just have to fall onto the right coloured triangles in order to get rid of them on the screen. It's such a unique and compelling game idea, and I really enjoyed playing this one. Next is another game that I've wanted to play for a long time, so thanks to this I finally got the chance, and that is Fantastic Night Dreams Cotton. Of course, Cotton is a very long running shoot 'em up series, and I was really curious to see how this version stacked up to the Game Boy Color one in particular. I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed if I'm completely honest. It seems quite slow low paced and outside of the bosses there aren't really that many enemies on the stage and the bosses themselves seem almost impossible to dodge their bullets. Maybe this is a game that I could get used to over time though. But again I'm glad that I had this so I didn't have to shell out the crazy amount of money it's going for these days. Of course there's loads more incredible games that I've played on here but I don't want this video to go on too long so have a look on the side here for a few more that I'd recommend but before we get on to my own games there is something else that this lets you do and that is go on a website like romhacking.net and find some translation patches and some rom hacks and actually put them on the actual system itself and I found some really exciting translations for games so let's take a quick look at those. So the first one is Card Fighters Clash 2 and I didn't even know this game existed but it's it's basically a follow-up to the fantastic Card Fighters Clash that I've been enjoying so much on the system, and the fact that I can play the sequel in English on this was just fantastic. Everything seems like it's been improved with this sequel. The graphics look better, the music is better, the animations are better, and it's just a lot more colourful, so I really am looking forward to playing some more of Card Fighters Clash 2. Another game that I was super excited to find an English patch for was Mega Man Power Battle. I am a huge, huge fan of the Mega Man series if you didn't know already, and one of the Mega Man games that's eluded me until now was Mega Man for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, and I was so excited to be able to finally play it, and honestly, it lived up to the hype. I love the arcade power battle games, and it feels like they've translated it incredibly well onto the handheld system. I am a little bit sad that there wasn't a proper Mega Man platformer for the system, but I'll take what I can get. Honestly, this was really fun. And now for a completely unknown RPG that I'd never heard about before, so when I found out that there was a translation patch for this one, I just had to try it, because RPGs aren't really a genre that the NGP is known for, so this one was called Nige Ron Pat, I believe anyway, and from what I've seen so far it has a really unique cast of characters and the translation seems really well done too. From what I can tell from the little bit of time that I've spent with the game, it is just your typical turn-based fighting, going through dungeons kind of adventure game, but it seems like it has some really fun characters and it seems like it has a really engrossing story as well, so maybe if I get my own system in the future and manage to find a flashcard online that doesn't cost the earth, then maybe I'll get back into playing some more of this one. And they were just a few of the translation patches that I wanted to bring up, but before we get onto my own games, there is one more thing, and if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll know what's coming. Of course, I'm talking about homebrew games. And honestly, I wasn't expecting there to be any homebrew games for the system, but I was actually very pleasantly surprised. And I'll highlight just a few of the more interesting ones now. The first one is called Diamond Run, and of course, if you're a fan of Boulder Dash, then you'll know exactly what to expect with this game. There's only a few levels that are playable, but it does seem like it had a lot of promise. Unfortunately, from what I could tell online though, the game hasn't been updated since 2007. The second one was a really promising looking vertical scrolling shooter, which seems to have been made for a competition over at pdroms.com. 
This one, again, is only a kind of proof of concept demo, but it does show a lot of potential, and I really hope to see more developers taking advantage of the system in the future. And the final one was one that I was really interested in because this actually has some 3D effects going on, as well as some vector graphics. And this one is called Gears of Fate, and it seems like a really fun puzzle game. You basically have to get this green marble to the end of the stage by rotating the entire screen around, and the graphical effect is really good, although it does seem like it's pushing the system to its limits because it does seem to run quite slowly. Of course there's loads more that I've found out for the system, but this video could literally go on forever if I talked about everything. So that was just a quick look at what this flashcard can do, and now let's take a look at the games that I actually own for the system. Here we go. Although most of the games that I've got I do have the boxes for, I could only actually find three in time for this video, so I'll show you what they look like here in the UK. This is a game called Biomotor Unitron, which is one of the rarest games for the system. I actually managed to pick this up from Vintage Gamer when I went there last year, and I was so excited to find this. It is quite expensive. They were going to sell it for 110, but I think I got it for about 90 in the end, which I was super happy with. But what I really want to show you is the kind of packaging that the games came in. So here in the UK, we actually got these really nice plastic clamshells with a really tough hinge on the side there. So when you find a Neo Geo Color game here in the UK, they're pretty much guaranteed to be in amazing condition. I've got the other two here and there's not a scratch on them. I really do think that putting the games in plastic containers like this was a great idea, even if it was a little bit more expensive for the developers and the publishers. Over in America, they actually got all of the Neo Geo games in car cardboard sleeves, and of course, just like the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, they're a lot harder to find in good condition, and that means that they're a lot more expensive. So I think actually collecting Neo Geo Pocket games, you're much better off trying to get the UK versions, because they all came in these really nice clamshell boxes, with little slots there for the instruction books as well. All of the instruction books are in full colour, and they all have really nice illustrations in them too, so if you're actually collecting for the system, it is really fun to try and get the manuals and have a look through and see all of the amazing little details that they added into them that you would never see otherwise. So that's what the boxes look like. Now let's take a look at the games. So here's all the games that I have for it. I have a really nice selection of games now. Each one of these games that I've got here easily could be one of the top games on the Game Boy or Game Boy Color. And I honestly have to say that although it did have a much smaller library than the Game Boy, the quality of the games on this system is just top tier, it really is. I honestly think that this might be the best ratio of good to bad games on any system ever. At least if you don't count all of the hundreds of casino games for the system. Honestly, I have no idea why there's so many slot machines for this thing. So the first two here are the two Metal Slug games for the system, and of course, if you you're a fan of SNK, then I'm sure you've played many, many Metal Slug games in the past, and these do not disappoint. It's really interesting to go back and play an 8-bit take on one of my favourite arcade games of all time, and they definitely live up to everything that the arcade game had to offer, plus a lot more single-player features, especially in the second game, where it has a variety of different missions, different things that you can collect throughout the game, and they play really well too. Obviously, it's quite downgraded compared to the originals, but what they managed to get out of the system System was really impressive. It still contains all of the really fun sprites and level designs and all of the different weapons that you can pick up in the game. Just two absolutely fantastic action platformers and if you've got a Neo Geo Pocket or if you're thinking of getting one then you have to pick up the Metal Slug games to go along with it. They will really not disappoint and I actually prefer these two games over the Metal Slug game that came out on the GBA a few years later. I think these ones are a lot more unique and interesting. Now I mentioned that I'd been playing through Card Fighters Clash there was actually two different versions of the game. There was an SNK version and there was a Capcom version, and they basically play exactly the same, but it kind of changes which cards you get at the beginning of the game and which ones you can pick up by defeating some of the opponents in the game as well. They're very similar to the Pokemon trading card game for the Game Boy Color, which was one of my favorite games for that system. So the fact that the Neo Geo has its own card fighting game, and it has a really nice rule set, it's really easy to understand, it's really fast and fun, and and the graphics are really nice as well. I love the way that the cards are designed to have the sprites actually coming out the sides of the card. I think it looks really good, and I actually played this all weekend last week. And I've only got one more boss to do in the game, and then I've actually completed it. Next up is two amazing puzzle games for the system. We have Puzzle Bubble Mini 
and we have Puzzle Link 2. Of course, Puzzle Bobble has been released on many, many systems over the years, and it plays just as well here as it does on anything else. The colours, of course, are really nice and vibrant, and the gameplay is just as fun and addictive as it is on anything else. And the other game, Puzzle Link 2, this is a really unique game, and in fact, this only ever got a release on the Neo Geo Pocket Colour, so it's a pretty unique one as well. It's quite similar to something like Magical Drop, mixed with Quarth, maybe, the old Taito game. Basically, you have to make lines that match up different colours on different columns going across the screen, and the columns keep coming down, and you have to create these matches, and then eventually, when you've cleared enough of the screen, you have to match up the two shining balls together, and that's how you clear the stage. It's a really fun game, it's actually very addictive, and it's probably one of my favourite games on the system. Now next is SNK's answer to Pokemon. Of course, every good handheld needs its battle in RPG, and this one is called Biomotor Unitron, and what surprised me about this game is the fact that it actually came out on the Switch last week. No one was expecting that, and it is a really cool game. So if you've got a Switch, if you don't want to spend over £100 for a boxed copy like I did, then that is a much more affordable and sane option. So basically, Biomotor Unitron is Pokemon with robots. There's randomly generated dungeons, there's some really, really nice sprite work in the overworld, where you get to talk to the various people and build up your robots, and just find out more about the local in the town before you go off to fight in the tournaments. It's a really cool game. If you've got a Neo Geo Pocket Color, it is very expensive. Luckily, my friends over at Vintage Gamer did me a really good deal on this, but it is going up fast, so if you are interested, have a look on eBay, although probably thanks to the Switch game coming out, it might have actually got even more expensive over the past week or two. So if you can find a copy, definitely recommend it, but like I said, it is on the Switch if you can't afford it. And the next game is kind of an RPG, but also kind of an action game. For some reason, it kind of reminds me of a more action-focused Resident Evil game. It's called Dark Arms, and the interesting thing about this game is the fact that it's an RPG, but you don't actually level up your character. Instead, you actually level up their weapon. And there's loads of different guns and different weapons that you can collect throughout the game, and you're going off to these different areas and killing all of the zombies and collecting their souls, and then you take that back to the workshop and build up your next better weapon to be able to go further into the game. It's a really interesting premise, and it works really well, it's got really nice graphics, and it's actually really fun to play too. Very unique game, and as far as I know, it's not been released on anything else, so definitely check out Dark Arms. I don't think it's quite as expensive as Biomotor Unitron either, so highly recommend this one. Now for some sports games. Of course, SNK was well known for their sports games in the arcade, and I've got two here that were ported to the Neo Geo Pocket. They are Neo Turf Masters and Pocket Tennis Color. Both really fun interpretations of the arcade game. Pocket Tennis I find to be extremely challenging. I don't know why that is. I don't know whether it's because I grew up playing Mario Tennis and Virtua Tennis, and those games are actually very forgiving. So when I first played this one, I really, really struggled to get anywhere in the game. But if you like a challenge and you want something that's going to take a lot of time to master, but also have that pick up and play arcade style gameplay as well, then definitely check out Pocket Tennis. But my favorite of the two is definitely Neo Turf Masters. And of course the arcade game Neo Turf Masters is just fantastic. It's not what you would expect from a golf game. It's actually really well designed. It's really fun and it has great graphics. And all of the physics and the graphics and the fun gameplay have translated perfectly onto the handheld system. This is definitely my favorite portable golf game. And I know there's a lot out there, but this one is really good. It's really, really polished for the system. It has great controls. It's easy to see where you're aiming and how far it's going to go. You can tell the wind speed and everything you need to know. And it's also got a load of really nice anime style cutscenes as well. So definitely recommend Neo Turf Masters. And next, a game that IGN famously gave a 10 out of 10 and definitely a highlight for the system. This is Sonic Pocket Adventure. It's basically a remix of Sonic 2 mixed with the music from Sonic 3, which is a little bit weird at first, but when you get over that, it is a really good game, and considering it's only really an 8-bit system, it plays a lot better than any of the Sonic games that have come before it on handhelds. Compared to the Game Gear games, and of course the Gamecom game, which was the first one outside of a Sega console, this one just blows them clean out of the water. It plays really well, even considering the fact that the system doesn't have a D-pad, it's really easy 
easy to control. It also improves on the special stages from Sonic 2 as well. They seem a lot smoother in this game and it actually seems easier to collect the rings before you turn the corner. They seem to appear a little bit sooner than they do on the Mega Drive. There's just something about it that seems a little bit easier. But the main game, of course, being based on Sonic 2, it's just a fantastic game all around. And there are a few little unlockables that mean that you want to play the game over and over again to unlock these different puzzle pieces. And this was actually the first Sonic game that Dimps worked on as well before they went off to make the Sonic Advance series on the Game Boy Advance. So you can actually tell a lot of the work that they put into this game. They kind of carried through to the GBA a few years later. So it's a really interesting game from a historical point of view as well. And the final game here, and probably the game that the system is most well known for, or at least the genre that SNK and the Neo Geo are most well known for. Of course, this is a fighting game. This one that I've got here is King of Fighters R2, which I believe is the best one, but I don't have any others here to compare it. I would like to get some, but I know they're all going up in price so much. But when I first played King of Fighters R2, I was really impressed with what they'd managed to do out of a handheld system with only two buttons. It basically features everything you could hope for from a fighting game, and using that eight-way direction on clicky stick feels really nice playing a fighting game on it. There's loads of animations, there's loads of different characters and sprites, and even the backgrounds look really good. So if you want an arcade style fighting game and you love your SNK fighters, then there's a whole range of fighting games on the system. But my personal recommendation, partly thanks to the fact that I haven't got any of this, but I do hear that this one is really good. This is King of Fighters R2. So that was just a quick look at everything the Neo Geo Pocket has to offer. And there's some really good news too. It seems like SNK is really getting back into the Neo Geo Pocket recently, and they've actually started re-releasing the games on the Switch. So here's how it looks on there. It looks really nice. The emulation is just perfect. It's got some really nice filters and nice scaling options too. At the minute, there's 10 games up on the eShop and there's more coming soon too. And as well as those games, there's also a physical volume of games as well, which I've also got. And that also uses the same amazing emulation software. And as well as the games being out now on the Switch, of course, you can also use emulators to play the games too. But there's also an adapter coming to the analog pocket very soon, which of course I'll be pre-ordering as soon as the pre-orders are available for that. And of course, you can also get your original system modded by a variety of different sellers, as well as buying pre-modded systems too so there's loads of ways to enjoy the Neo Geo Pocket outside of its original form factor. Let me know down in the comments below what your favourite game for the system is or if you don't have one yet let me know what game you would like to get for the system as well and let me know your thoughts and opinions on it. Do you think it should have done better like the title suggests? Do you think it deserved better? Do you think it could have held up when the GBA released a few years later? Do you think if more developers got on board do you think it would have taken off? I mean I think it is a really nice system and I think if it did have the support behind it, it could have lasted a few more years, at least here in the UK where SNK seemed to give it a little bit more of a push than they did over in America. Overall, it is a really fascinating system and I'm so glad that I have one and that I'm able to make this video and of course thank you so so much to Deadpan Robot for letting me borrow your amazing backlit version here. I will definitely get my own at some point because I want to go back and finish Card Fighters Clash. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, check out Patreon to join everyone going across the bottom of the screen right now and I'll see you all very soon for the next episode. Goodbye.